Hello everyone, I am a young woman with a passion for self-care. It all started with fundraising and has shown me that using my skills and knowledge, I can help solve smelly problems for others. Hence is why I'm making these videos throughout this journey. So in my last video, I kept talking about lie. In this one, I'll tell you what lie is. Yeah. Fundamentally, it is found on the atomic number 19 and 11. It is an alkaline metal hydroxide typically obtained from wood ash, but can also come from metals beneath the earth and lake brines, etc. Commercially, it is mass produced through a process called electrolysis, a process where an electrical current passes through a substance and creates a chemical effect that is exothermic, producing heat and a new chemical as it does so. There are two major types of lye, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. What I use specifically for the product I want is sodium hydroxide. To use lye, you need protective gear such as goggles, gloves, and something to put your hair away, a face mask, and some sort of ventilation. It's preferable to be outside when you're making your lye because of the fumes when you mix the water with the sodium chloride or potassium chloride. It makes a chemical reaction, which creates dust or small particles of NaOH or KOH into the air that can cause irritation when inhaled along with some sort of measuring tool so that you're making sure that everything is actually not too little or not too much of these things. So sodium hydroxide is commercially obtained with electrolysis of sodium chlorine. It is made up of salt water, aka brine. The hydrogen ion bonds with sodium, which makes sodium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide is a similar process. Using electrolysis from membrane cell technology, potassium salt in a liquefied form of brine is also electrolyzed to make potassium hydroxide. A lye originally was obtained from leaching wood ashes. It's where you pass soft water through wood ashes over and over until you have caustic liquid from such passing. Soft water is the opposite of hard water, which contains a lot of calcium and minerals. It's where it's free from these things, mostly making it perfect for soap as it helps your soap be pure, which helps speed up the saponification process. If you have curly hair, you already know how soft water is good for your hair and how hard water has minerals that can dry out your hair. Those minerals is what is bad for your hair. So. Through your wood ashes that were obtained by burning some sort of hardwood like white oak, white maple, ash, and beech, hardwood you burn to produce hardwood ashes. These hardwood ashes have enough potassium to create soap and good enough to clean skin, something softwood ashes like white pine, spruce, etc. can't produce. These hardwood ashes, since they are caustic, is enough to form soap. So soft water and hardwood ashes is good for making lye. Through the saponification process, soap isn't oil, nor water, nor lye, which is kind of weird because that's an ingredient, but it became another substance, which is soap. People formed the hate train against lye because they didn't calculate their measurements correctly. Now we have websites, equations, and other safety measures to do this safely. So my customers all spoke of their skin being better after using my soap, and I have seen improvement in my own as well as I use all my soaps two weeks before selling anything to make sure it's good. So the major difference between KOH, potassium hydroxide, and NaOH, sodium hydroxide, is their cost, properties, and purposes. Potassium is more soluble in water and is said to be faster at cleaning compact oils and is great for making liquefied soap like shampoo. While sodium hydroxide is known for its lower cost in comparison to potassium hydroxide and you will have harder bars of soap, it's good for general bodily use. If you want to think of things more abstractly, lye is like the alkaline baking soda and oil is like the apple cider vinegar. Once they are together, they form a reaction completely different from what they are separated from one another. You can check out my first video where I discuss the soap making process. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. Take care.